This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and food. And food babies. <laughs> Next Deliberately episode. and maliciously spreading disinformation. <laughs> Well, and that's back when you could go to the mall on 20 bucks. Now you can't do anything there for 20 bucks. <laughs> no. What happens after Barbie goes to the gynecologist? I want to know. <laughs> really, Black Friday should be the day that you're putting together some leftover monstrosity sandwich. IFAF, Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Have you heard that Walmart is giving away free turkeys? To oh. anyone who can outrun security. <laughs> uh, more like anyone who doesn't know how to use a self-checkout. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you know, I actually keep seeing signs that say no turkeys through self-checkout. Yeah. Which is smart. Yeah. Yeah. I actually saw a study the other day that said that um, stores with self-checkout reported 4% over double the amount of loss that stores without self-checkout did. Who could have seen that coming? I'm starting to see a lot of self-checkout backlash. Mm -hmm. You know, people who are just upset that, well, I, now I got to do your job too. And, I, and I'm one of the guys that goes to Winco. Right. All the time. I don't oh, mind I love Winco. bagging my own grocery. I, I actually have an I Love Winco t-shirt. Yeah, Winco rocks. <laughs> yeah. First off, I love that I know where everything is in it, and they don't change it all the time like so many of the other stores. That drives me nuts. I like that I can go in there. I know where my groceries are. I can get in, get out, and everything's like, like they have so much variety. You know, they have the cheap stuff and the nice end, like the higher end stuff. Yeah. And my buddy Brad made the observation that they have the freshest produce in town. And I would yes. almost, I would add to that by far. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. Win Winco produce can last a month, mm -hmm. maybe more, mm -hmm. maybe six weeks in my fridge. Whereas some other stuff is wrinkly the next day. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, and I think it's because of their volume that they do. Mm-hmm. It's they, where everywhere it's where everyone goes. They've got the lower prices, so more people come through, more mm -hmm. people go through their produce. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Although their limes have been shit most of the time when I go there. Oh really? Yeah, a lot of the time their limes are like not good, okay. which is really frustrating cuz I used to I used to use a lot of limes. <laughs> you do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Even now I do. Anytime but, we yeah. get Mexican, you ask oh, for limes and then extra limes them. and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love limes. I love the I love the acid the acidity. Um wow, I'm tripping over my <laughs> I'm tripping over my words a lot this episode. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll work on that. Let me have a little swig of water. I wonder if Winco is doing the free turkeys if you spend a hundred bucks again this year. Oh, that'd be cool. And I'll that's check on well that. that's so easy to do now. You buy like five packs of Oreos and you're there. Right. You know? <laughs> All right. So welcome to our Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> We're gonna have our first annual Thanksgiving roast coming up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now look, I know that sometimes when people vent it makes you, gentle listener, feel like, um, oh, they're angry, and that's angry energy, and that's it, maybe it's directed toward mm -hmm. me. Not at all. This or is, maybe even that they can't take criticism. We got a wonderful comment from one Les Adler who said, oh, who commented on our, do you remember we had a little bit last episode where we talked about how we've got the Christmas tree up, mm -hmm. but it's still decorated in fall colors. Yes. And I suppose after this week... This is our nice little compromise, right? Yeah. We'll we'll go we'll decorate it uh Christmassy after this episode. Once I Thanksgiving think that's fair. is over. Yeah. Yeah. Uh so the clip that he watched ended with me complimenting your dress and how it matched the fall colors on the tree behind you. Oh yeah, I remember that. I that, thought that was nice. That was the bit. Les said was going to give a like. But I don't like this guy's attitude or the way he talks to the girl. It's off-putting. He's very stifling mm -hmm. and short. And you can tell he's just dealing. she's just dealing with it and was definitely exhausted by the end of that convo. I wonder if he's a, a psychologist or something and he can read body language, language really well. I doubt it because I think that he's wrong. But. Okay, okay, and I wanted to, get, I wanted to let yeah. you go first on this because really... so. Les, I would say, um, first of all, do you work for IMAX? Because that's a hell of a projection <laughs> right there. Like, wow, buddy, you're right. Let's let's tackle it one line by line here. You could have given it a like, Les. You could have given it a dislike. But instead, you wrote just a wildly cringy white knight virtue signaling paragraph mm -hmm. about how you feel about us. Right. Now, look, I will say you got a point, buddy. I've had plenty of people say, you know, you rubbed me the wrong way when I first met you. 
<laughs> and, and I'm glad I stuck it out. Mm-hmm. And I hope, Les, that that's the case with you. I doubt it. And I'm talking directly to you, even wow, though so personal. The guy's not going to ever watch this. Oh, probably. He's not. some schlub who like was scrolling through. To be fair, you don't know if he's a schlub. He's just a schmo. <laughs> Maybe he's just a handsome six foot six, you know, oh, two hundred fifty, all muscles swinging. Yeah, yeah, let's let's give him a swinging dick while we're at it. <laughs> yeah, and just and unbelievably tall, dark, and handsome. Oh, just chiseled jaw. In fact, I'm going to yeah. say that I'm going to believe. Yeah. that that's exactly who this guy is, mm-hmm. and not some neck oh, beard. And he was raised with five sisters, so he actually understands feminine energy, and yeah. he like doesn't assume that you're on your period if you're mad I, i'm he's, gonna assume he's like a genuinely good guy yeah yeah he, he's a doctor in a christmas hallmark movie yes we're yep. just we're gonna assume i think that's great that yeah. less is better than me just <laughs> generally speaking yeah let's assume it <laughs> but but less uh next time just hit the dislike button buddy <laughs> now and also this was on a short right yeah so he, he made a judgment about our relationship based mm-hmm. on a 60 second quickly edited clip. Well, and not only that. From a one hour long podcast right. show, internet talk show, whatever we are. Well, and also, I've seen how you edit the shorts, and you have to cut out any excess. Bam, bam, so bam. you actually you lose some cadence that we would normally have with each other. Yeah. Because you have to make it as small and as compressed as possible. So, you know, I could actually really understand where he'd come up with the whole, you're really short and stifling with her because you're not. But when you edit it, in maybe that it, it does like come it. A, yeah, maybe it does come across like that if you're just listening to it. Yeah, a lot has to get sacrificed. And sometimes it's you who controls most of the conversation, most of that 60 seconds. And sometimes mm-hmm. it's me. It's right. just... It's it's completely random. So mm-hmm. for have you ever heard the uh, parable of the blind man and the elephant? There's like I, I don't think know it's if a, I, have. I think it's a Chinese parable where um you know one blind guy feels the elephant's leg and says, "Oh, the elephant is very much like a tree." One mm-hmm. guy f- feels his trunk and says, "Oh, the elephant is very much like a snake." Mm-hmm. One guy feels the elephant's ear and says, "Oh, the elephant is very much like a palm tree Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know but they all have their different perspectives based in their own reality i mean i guess the one thing i'd say (laughs) is maybe dig a little deeper before you make a full like a full assessment right is but isn't that funny though we all think we know we our reality is only what gets input into our own eyeballs from our own viewpoint and i wonder less who hurt you you know (laughs) did somebody walk all over you in your childhood oh i think do i remind you of your negligent stepdad you know, I mean, haven't we all had one of those? All right, buddy. Not me. I have great parents. I love my parents. Happy Thanksgiving, Les. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Moving on. Oh, there was that one other comment, too. Um, what was it? Milkers. <laughs> that has by far been my favorite comment we've ever received. I don't remember who it's from. I think it's on our one of our YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. And uh, all caps, four exclamation points, just the word milkers. Right. And I didn't know if she was talking about me <laughs> or if she was saying that we're milking our content too much. I don't know. I don't know. But, you know, since we're calling out <laughs> comments, let's call that one out. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing. I, first off, I love your comment. Whoever you are, I love you. <laughs> I just want some more context. It, like, if you are calling me out for having my titties out on the internet, that's cool. But I don't know. I, I can't be offended not, unless you give me more context. They're not out. <laughs> they're not. They're there. I, I'm pretty conservative. <laughs> yeah. You know, sometimes. Most of the time. I think it's... um. Do you remember in one of the Austin Powers movies where Fred Savage plays the mole? And he's got a giant mole. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And Austin Powers can't yes. contain himself. And he keeps saying, molly, 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 molly. <laughs> yes, of course I remember that. I think that that was a, yeah, I think that was just a bit of uh, Tourette syndrome from yeah. that particular user. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just typing it right out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> kind of funny. Hmm. And, and I want one more thing to say to Les. Les, uh, and we've talked about this on a previous show. Uh, you might be thinking of those popular radio morning shows that uh, throw people together in a room for a steady paycheck and say, okay, make your magic. And in reality, they can't stand each other. Yeah. I know that that happens a lot in mm-hmm. radio. 
However, Car- just so you know, for the record, Carly and I um, like each other. Mm-hmm. We like Idaho Falls. We like spending time. We've spent mm-hmm. time together before this show. Then after the show, we're going to go spend time together. I'm taking him out on a date later. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we going? Do we know? We haven't. Well, you haven't decided yet. I've, oh. I've presented a few options. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Probably che, either Che, cast iron, cast iron, maybe smoking fins if you're feeling yummy. it. Yeah, my. I know, whatever you feel like. I can't lose. How did I? <laughs> how do I, Ray? Why did I get so special? Because <laughs> oh, you're cute. So I guess, um, yeah. <laughs> Look, I may be an asshole. I'm not. I, I'm definitely the asshole of my family. <laughs> no, I'm serious. When they need an asshole, mm. they call me. I get that. If they need somebody to dig into say my mom's wrongful death lawsuit mm-hmm. which didn't happen but we let three attorneys decide that instead of me right. um th- i'm the call they make right you know i get that all right well you're here's, the one who knows how to be a hard ass i'm not taking you out on a date but i did get you <laughs> this is my thanksgiving it's all the hickory farm stuff which i love hickory farm so much in stores now mm-hmm Got it at Winco, in fact. I love it when the little kiosk pops up in the mall. Cause, yeah. I mean, it's just so fun. Yeah. I love the big packages that they come with that have all the fun stuff in them. I always get Hickory the Farms. little boxes, little sample yeah. sample boxes. Yeah. I always get Hick- Hickory Farms for people for Christmas because it's, personally, it's something I would love to get. So I have to assume they'd want it too. Sure. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's how I give gifts. Right. I would love this. Click buy. Here you go. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think most of the time I'm right. Yeah. Yeah. Although my I gave my dad Hickory Farms one year for Christmas and I was like, hey, first off, my dad never seems excited for any gift, but no. there have been a couple <laughs> when I've got a twinkle in his eye. One of them was when I bought him this really amazing, it was like a second piece for this big toolbox he bought. It was expensive AF, uh-huh. but it was like the perfect, like it matched his toolbox perfectly. It was like a whole additional piece that sat on top like a writer and uh, how thoughtful oh i did good that year i was gonna say (laughs) that's uh, one of the things on my list of what to get the man who has everything and maybe you know Mm -hmm. what next week we'll we'll address that Mm -hmm. and talk about that because i'm brilliant and they're amazing ideas they are but is Mm -hmm. you get you get him an accessory of what his favorite thing already is right so that was a brilliant yeah i thought it was really smart and i just remember like when I pulled it out for him, because I, I couldn't wrap it. It was too big. Uh, but when I pulled it out and gave it to him, I just remember him kind of having this little tiny smile and just a little twinkle in his eye. And he's like, this is really nice. And I was like, yeah, I know. Thanks. <laughs> but I remember this one year I gave him a big box full of hick- like Hickory Farm stuff. And he was like, hey, thanks. You know, no biggie. Just kind of threw it on the counter with kinda, the other stuff. Kind of. Put it with all the other things. And I finally said to him, I was like, Pop, do you not like Hickory Farms? And he's like, yeah, not really. And I was like, oh, what? Who doesn't like Hickory Farms? Right. It's Who just... doesn't like? Nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee. Right. That's what I don't get. Yeah. So anyway. I was blown away when I realized, by the way, that slogan was, nobody doesn't like Sarah Lee. Instead of nobody does it like Sarah Lee. Oh, okay. I think they use a double negative in a coy, clever way. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Or I, I might I be part that. of the problem is spreading information, <laughs> misinformation, disinformation on the internet. Well, we can always correct it ne- next Deliberately episode. Deliberately and maliciously spreading disinformation. <laughs> We're fake news. <laughs> if you're, and it happened again, by the way. What? Just a thing we talked about hitting a major news outlet. And, and but this time, this about? time they were like two or three weeks late really? uh, about the uh, Starbucks and the Dutch bros in Rexburg. Oh, really? I, we, They're just getting to we, that? Ju- yep. Oh, we, okay. ju- we, we broke that news. <laughs> Whatever. Isn't it funny, though, that Rexburg is getting not one, uh, but two actual coffee shops. Right. Well, and to be fair, I know that they have a local coffee shop up there. Okay. Um, Because the owner came into my retail shop down here not too no long kidding. ago and was telling me about it. And I was like, do you get pretty good volume up there? Because I think with all the LDS kids, you probably wouldn't sell that much. And she's like, no, there are tons of people coming in and getting coffee all the time. Well, and I would say from so, a um, from a market research perspective, mm-hmm. you know how they do before right. they launch a store in a particular market, mm-hmm. meaning city or town or metropolitan area. Right. They do their research and they go, what, dude, this, this Idaho Falls, the Idaho Falls area is kind of weird to begin with. Idaho Falls is the biggest city in the nation without... A college. Right. Or a university. 
I guess we've that's got, true, huh? We've got ISU in Pocatello, U of I, of course, in Moscow, BYU, Idaho, and Rexburg, but Idaho Falls doesn't have, we've got CEI. We do, and we do have branches of both ISU and U of I. Yeah, they must go, we, well, Rexburg needs a coffee shop. There's all these college students and no car. Co- are you kidding? We'll make a mint. <laughs> oh, it'll be fun. And and by the way, the market researchers made totally the wrong call when they researched Chipotle. And instead of putting, they should have put it in Idaho Falls, but right. instead they put it in Pocatello. And didn't it go under? Maybe I it's think back. It did. I don't know. I don't know. But yeah. We should really check that before. Hey, market researchers, just ask us. We'll tell you what I'll do well here. Right. And also, it's kind of a mistake that Honey Baked Ham isn't open yet. Oh, okay. Here it is. Here's the footy from Honey Baked Ham this week. And yes, I poked my head in and no, they're nowhere near ready to go. I thought they were going to open November 11th for certain, November 12th for some reason. That's what I'd heard. Now I'm hearing it's December 12th or something. Uh, I was so hoping for a honey baked ham for Thanksgiving, but instead we'll have to wait till Christmas. Totally bummed on that one. That sucks. And if you haven't had honey baked ham yet, it's amazing. (laughs) I Uh. never have. Oh, it's wow. I'm really excited to try it. And I think one of their gimmicks is they put a little brown sugar on the outside <laughs> and the guy actually sits there Mama with lie. a welding mask <laughs> and a blowtorch. Oh, that's hot. And glazes Literally. it. It like he's behind a window so you can see it. It's oh, sort of man. their display. So it's kind of like Krispy Kreme. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. You, you can see it being honey baked. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. You can or, see it getting crispy. That's how they finish it off or something. But it makes the best <laughs> split pea soup of all weird things to do with leftover ham. Okay. That actually makes a lot of sense though. Because the ham is a little sweet. sweet. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's so oh, good. I actually kind of love split, split pea soup. I think it's so good. You know, we've talked about how what you hate as a kid, you start to kind of like as an adult. Right. Uh-huh. For some people, it's mustard. For some people, it's onions. Mm-hmm. Uh, for yeah, split pea soup looks like baby poop. There's no oh, yeah. two ways about it. It looks gross. It looks like a tragic diaper accident. <laughs> And with honey baked ham, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. You put a couple bay leaves in there too to plus it. Mm. Yeah. I love, yeah, I love pea soup. You know, I was a mustard kid. Like I hated mustard until suddenly I didn't. And now it's like, I mean, you see me, I go ham on mustard. I put mustard on ham. (laughs) (laughs) Do you remember walking into your grandparents' house in the summer, like if you had to stay with them for a while? Mm -hmm. Well, yours lived right next door. They did. I would visit mine in Seattle every summer. My parents got a free three-month Mikey free vacation. (laughs) And uh, they just had bullshit in their fridge. They had old people food like Perrier, Mm -hmm. sardines. Melba toast, mm. that peanut butter, the Adams peanut butter without the sugar. Mm-hmm. And now, well, okay, I have three out of the five. No sardines and no Melba toast for me. I love sardines. I think they're so good. <laughs> but I love Perrier. I love sugar-free peanut butter. Yeah, my grandparents weren't like that at all. My pa- my grandparents always had the really good snacks that my oh. parents didn't have. Like my grandma always had toaster strudel. Oh my gosh! I would die for toaster Those strudel. Are good. They were my mom refused to buy them probably because they were kind of expensive. Your parents got pop tarts. Your grandma got toaster oh, strudel. My parents wouldn't even buy pop tarts. Your parents got little Debbie. Your grandma got Hostess. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, no. My parents would. They wouldn't never... even buy pop tarts. No. Uh, no. My brother and I would have to use our own money that we I don't know somehow got. We didn't get an allowance, <laughs> so I don't know how we ever had money. Mom's purse. But, no, we didn't no. steal any money either. Uh. I think we'd like, sometimes I'd ask my mom for 20 bucks to go to the mall and then I'd spend as little possible so I'd have spending money later. Smart. Yeah. Um, but any, Well, and that's back when you could go to the mall on 20 bucks. Now you can't do anything there for 20 bucks. <laughs> no. So, you know, anytime I'd go over to my grandma's house, she'd always have like soda pop in the basement and she'd have um, toaster strudel and pop tarts and, uh, oh, hot pockets. Oh, she always had hot pockets. They were so good. And you know what else she had that I loved? Mm. She had that uh, dried mango from Costco. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. She and that was before we had a Costco. So she'd have a friend pick it up. I actually think it was my uncle uh, pick it up in uh, Pocatello whenever he was down there and bring her some. Wow. And I would just go in and just steal a whole bunch of it and sneak around with it. And she got so mad because she's like, I can't just get that any old time. Let's go to the follow-ups, shall we? Let's. Okay. Starlink satellites. There was a sighting we talked about last show Mm -hmm. and how there's like, I don't know, 
I would say just offhand, 13 in a row. Yeah. Apparently, that's when they're being launched. Oh. You only see those Starlink satellites when they're being launched into the low Earth orbit that they eventually assume. Wild. Okay. So that's why there's only 13 of them. Would you like to know, Carl, how many Starlink satellites they are? Would you like to hazard a guess? And it's unfair, again, because I've got the info. I'm putting you on the spot. If I was guessing, 480. Okay. 5,000. <laughs> 12,000 planned, possibly extended to 42 thousand satellites wow whoa that's a lot and and they've got them in such an orbit that at any given time anywhere on earth has starlink satellite service wild okay that's kind of cool so that's the ultimate evil plan yeah 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 and we talk you know that space debris is apparently a huge issue now it's creating issues it's okay it's for uh, astronomers it's creating light pollution right and there's legit concerns about collisions with other satellites yes we talked about how many we speculated how many times around the earth mm -hmm. they would make in a day oh yeah the answer is 15.5 <laughs> well, would you look at that? Would you look at that? I said 20, so I was a little yeah. high. Well, yeah, but still a lot closer. I think I said like at least once a day. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> So we were... We. I, I seem to underguess quite a bit. <laughs> eh, but how would you know? I wouldn't right, know. Right. I thought there were 13 of them. Yeah. I thought it was just the ones we see pictures of occasionally. <laughs> no, there's like 5,000 freaking satellites. Also, it's sort of amazing that that's how many it takes to get coverage everywhere. Yeah, well, and with 12,000 planned, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. got to be. And how slowly do they move? Because what if you were like on a desert island or on a boat? Right. At, we've talked about Point Nemo before. Mm -hmm. It's the most isolated uh, point in the world. It's the it's in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, farthest away from anything. Uh -huh. And and like, you, you, you know, you got to make a satellite call on your satellite phone. Right. Huh. And and you're like, oh, that satellite went. Oh, here comes another one. You know, like, are you doing this as you are you waving your phone? <laughs> you're like pacing, like you're very too, quickly. <laughs> you're too young to remember when you'd be making a cell call and your service was crap, so you'd hold it up. Oh no, I did that in the air. Did you do that? Oh yeah. Okay, man. One of my favorite phones that I've ever had was this crappy pink pay as you go one that I bought because my main phone had like gotten destroyed somehow. I don't remember. Um, but anyway, I'd gotten this pink crappy pay as you go, but I put my normal SIM card in it and that thing had a three foot antenna <laughs> that just like telescoped out of it. And I couldn't believe like that it kept going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. As a matter of fact, what I liked about that phone too, was that it actually had space for two SIM cards. So I always called it my Barbie drug dealer phone. Okay. Cause like you could have a secret extra number on there and One stuff. One year burner number. Right, right. Right. Well, and it's a burner phone too already. And uh. then that stupid antenna, I was like. This is what like a really cute drug dealer would use, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like maybe that'll be um, the sequel to the Barbie movie. You know there's going to be one, oh, right? Yeah. There's got to be. They've already set it up. What happens after Barbie goes to the gynecologist? I want to know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, spoiler alert. Hopefully nothing bad. Hopefully, yeah, sure. Yeah. It's, probably, it's fine. Yeah. It's just <laughs> she finds out she has like ovarian cysts or something. <laughs> oh, that'd be so <laughs> sad. <laughs> Poor Barbie. Get some plastic surgery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> okay. I mean, really, though, Barbie is sort of a retelling of Pinocchio. Is it? She's a doll who wants to be a real person. Yeah. And she becomes a real person at the end. I'm a real boy. Sorry for the spoilers, but if you haven't seen Barbie by now, you don't want to see it, I guess. So it's, sorry that you hate your life and you hate happiness. <laughs> it was such a great flick. It was so good. Still haven't seen Oppenheimer. <laughs> I know. We, we should really fix that. I, I've got it, though. I've okay, got it. Hot. So we can All watch right, it at we'll any time. It. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love it. Um, somebody said uh, that Cillian Murphy looked perfectly androgynous. Mm -hmm. And um, somebody else commented, yeah, it's almost like he was created by a man and a woman. And then somebody else commented, well, that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I sort of assumed that the first person was being snarky. Maybe. When they say Maybe. it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Another follow-up, White Christmas. We talked about White Christmas probability in Idaho Falls, Idaho. I did get the official number. We're in the 90 to 100% range. Oh, good. So we're almost definitely going to have White Christmas? Yeah. Oh, that's so hot. Well, I love so, that. And so, or should I say that's so cool? Well, but I mean on an annual basis. 
Oh, really? Yeah. So this podcast, really, we're finding out we have three sort of different audiences. People that live here, people that used to live here, and people who are thinking about living here. Right, right. So if you're thinking about living here and you want a place, if, if a place with a white Christmas is on your checklist, we check that box. I do like that we have all four seasons. Yeah. Like, here's the thing. There's a big part of me that wants to go somewhere warmer. But there's an even bigger part of me that wants to go somewhere that has all four seasons well, always. Like we talked about sweater weather. Well, and I look great in a sweater. You're I can't wearing go the somewhere sweater. where I can never wear a sweater. Yeah. You know? I'm wearing the most uh, fall Thanksgiving-y thing I could think of, which was <laughs> an old uh, shopping center here in town, saving center. By the way, if you like this t-shirt and you remember the saving center, you're old. <laughs> and probably the noises you used to make during sex are now the noises you make when getting off the couch. <laughs> but... um. <laughs> But TetonT-shirts.com has a bunch of stuff like this you might remember. And you can get it in any color. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, which I think is pretty fun. One last follow-up. You know, I actually do remember Saving Center. You do? I do. Okay. Yeah, I specifically have this one memory where my dad's mom, uh, my grandma on his side, actually took my brother and I with her there, and I ended up buying this blue tube thing that you whip around and it makes a noise. Oh, yeah. You know those? <laughs> yes. Yeah, she bought me one of those, yeah. and I thought it was the coolest those. thing, and I played with it for like three months. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. I thought you were going to say three minutes. <laughs> no. Because that was about my attention span on those things. I was like, right. oh, cool, and then you'd do it to everybody you you knew, right. and, they, and it would annoy them, and then it was the fun was over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which that's the thing. Usually with toys like that, you only play with it for a hot second, but I remember I kept three that thing for months. Ye- I actually kept it for years, and I would play with it occasionally because I thought it was super cool. Lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I'm also the same kid who would play Candyland by herself, so I didn't oh. take a lot to oh. <laughs> be entertained. Oh. Yeah. That's an <laughs> oh that could be interpreted as isn't that sweet or isn't that pathetic. That's a... <laughs> it's it kind of sad. <laughs> <laughs> equal parts, huh? Oh. <laughs> like, I remember doing it and being like, this is kind of sad, isn't it? <laughs> Was it going to stop me? No, I wanted to play Candyland, damn it. <laughs> We've talked about there are certain things that smell better than they taste. Right. Coffee. Mm-hmm. Waffles. Waffle cones. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are things that um, look better than they taste. Mm-hmm. Like those round lollipops you get at Disneyland that are <gasps> rainbow color. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. disappointingly don't Always. have a lot of fruit flavor. You don't yeah. taste the rainbow. It's just hard sugar. Yeah, it's really just sugar <laughs> sugar flavored. Candyland was a game that always looked more fun to play than mm-hmm. it actually was because it had all these colors mm-hmm. and it looked amazing. <laughs> and then you play it and you're just like, oh, I'm... See, it was one of my favorites. I'm going from point A to point B on a curvy road. (laughs) Right. Well, but I liked that you could get sent back to any point, too, or you could get like shot ahead. I hated that part. Oh, me too, but that was the thrill (laughs) of the game. I'm like, yeah, am I going to get no whammies, no whammies? (laughs) Yeah. Last follow up Kevin, our uh, buddy bro who hooked us up with European Kit Kats. We did the European versus American Kit Kats, and I believe the verdict was the American. Hershey's distributed Kit Kats. We liked a little bit better than the I Nestle liked a bit European distributed Kit Kats. So I texted him. I said, We had such a blast. Thank you so much. And then asked, Hey, what can we send you? Oh, yeah. And he said, How about some Idaho Spud Bars? Mm-hmm. So we sent him some Idaho Spud Bars yes. for him and Which his family. Which also, um, I really like the pink ones that you can get. The I think they're strawberry ones. They're oh, so good. We sent him now. What you're referring to, I believe, are mm-hmm. the locally made Fars candies. Yes, they look like the, well, they're yeah, a the ball Idaho Spuds, with a. Right? Well, okay, so Idaho Spud is just one kind of candy bar. Am I it's, being a silly the, little goose? It's the sort of chocolate, spongy, marshmallow covered in chocolate oh, okay. and coconut bar. Yes. Okay, I know that one. And then the other round candies you're thinking mm-hmm. of. I also included in there. Yeah, because those things rule. The, the Fars, I think we got them Huckleberry, Strawberry, and mm-hmm. one other thing. Yeah, probably Classic or something. Yeah. So, Kevin, thank you. Um, enjoy. Hope your whole family enjoys them, and happy Thanksgiving and stuff. He's going to Belgium on the first. Of course he is. Like, he just, I don't know what he does. Right. Exactly. But I kind of like that it's shrouded in a little mystery. Right, right. <laughs> I asked him, did I get your bio right? And he said, mostly. <laughs> okay, good enough. Yeah. If I could retain that after what, 30 years, Kev? I think that's pretty good. I think that's all right. Yeah. 
So last week was the Festival of Trees. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why they don't put it over the weekend, but it was just Monday through Friday. But they do go right. till like nine o'clock at night. Which is nice, but Maybe that's still, why. I kind of wish that they do a weekend. Yeah. Especially because like, I feel like anytime there's an event like that, there has to be at least 10 days for me to actually have time to go. Right. Because my calendar is always so booked. So that's a pretty good heads up, I think, for next year. Right. So they always do the Festival of Trees kind of early mm-hmm. in the year. And I think the reason they do it is maybe it's always the week before Thanksgiving. Um, but the reason they do it so early is so you get Christmas decorating ideas. Right. And, well, and you also, can even buy some stuff. Well, and yeah, since they're selling all of the trees there, you know, you don't yes. want to buy your tree like at the beginning of December because then you won't have it up all December. Yeah. Because then they've got to go for a week and then they have to ship it to you or bring it to you or however they do that, arrange a pickup time for you, you know, so it makes sense to do it the week before Thanksgiving because then you've got that, they've got that whole week of Thanksgiving to prepare, which you don't want to deal with that anyway. And then the week after that is when most people decorate anyway. So here's some footage. And along with the trees, they had mini trees. They had decorated doors, Mm -hmm. hearths, uh, wreaths, Mm -hmm. just anything you can possibly imagine when it comes to Christmas decorating. Then they had the little holiday boutique. Oh, and while I was shooting footage for the holiday boutique, wife of M and Mayor Sean Coletti, Jesse Coletti, (laughs) jumped in front of my camera. So cute. I love that. (laughs) So welcome to the show, Jesse. Nice job. (laughs) She hadn't heard of the show yet, Mm -hmm. so now she's heard of it. And I said, I apologize in (laughs) advance because, you know, I I don't, and I've had to apologize to a few of my conservative friends for the basic cable language and themes that we introduce on this show. This is nothing, it's not what you're going to hear on the radio or TV, but it's also nothing too salacious. Right, right. It's not Game of Thrones up in here. We've got barnyard language, sure. Man, there are so many times that like I'll be passing by a group of teenagers or something and they'll just be saying the most (laughs) rancid things. Uh, Like even I'm clutching my pearls. (laughs) Mm. Back on topic. Mm -hmm. The Festival of Trees was really cool. Put it in your calendar for the week before Thanksgiving next year. All the proceeds go to a great cause, the Development Workshop in Idaho Falls. Mm -hmm. And a a bunch of my friends were entertainers this year. Mm -hmm. So it it was really cool to get some decorating ideas. Oh, then they have the raffle and the baked goods and the raffle baskets. And am I missing anything? I don't think so. I think you mentioned that actually. Yeah. But man, that... You that like table the of tiaras, tiaras that you had sitting in there. Yeah. Like uh, I saw that pass in the fi- the footage when you showed me, and I was like, "Oh man, I wish I could have gone." That's what stopped <laughs> Carly dead in her tracks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she- yeah. I mean, a big table full of shiny things. I'm really just a crow in a human suit. So. You're, the, you're the Little Mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> but yeah, I just love shiny things. Yeah, you want one for your collection? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I only have one tiara. And a decorative headband, it's different. (laughs) (laughs) For our Thanksgiving episode, I definitely think we need, and my parents forced me to do this and I hated it when I was a kid, but I think we need to go around the table, which means (laughs) the two of us, Uh and talk about what we're thankful for. Okay, that sounds good to me. I think we need to do that. It's just a fun little tradition. Is it cool if we just do one thing or are we doing like three things? No, like one thing's fine. Okay, Just one thing. Okay. So I want to plant that seed right now. And before we get to that, just two, if you're, because this is the holiday season, it's the season of giving, it's the Wikipedia fundraiser season, everybody has a handout these days. Mm -hmm. Taco Bell wants you to round up from your Burrito Supreme to help whoever, and I'm sure they're all worthy causes. Although, I went to Goodwill this week, and... um, uh, to buy a thing, we'll talk. We'll either talk about it later this episode or next episode. The radio play that I'm in. Mm-hmm. So went to Goodwill and they're like, "Would you like to round up?" And I was like, "Well, what's the cause?" Goodwill. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh yes, I met a charitable organization's storefront. I get it. <laughs> right. Okay, but but two things as we get into the season of giving. Two things I want to mention. We mentioned this a couple of shows ago. You know all those food drives and everything. Idaho, there's a, there's a few food banks. Yeah, the uh, in Salvation Community Army. Basket. There's Community Food Basket. Mm-hmm. There's uh, Rexburg has one. I'm sure Pocatello mm-hmm. has one. I don't know if Blackfoot has one, but they might. Just give them money, and here's why: they have like your dollar that you donate to them is like four dollars right. in spending power because mm-hmm. they've got the connections. Yeah, they've got ways to make deals, and they're a nonprofit, so they can use their nonprofit tax exempt status. Like there, there are lots of good reasons to just give money instead of food. And I know, no, 
look, they won't complain if you give them food, but I'll tell you what's involved. They have to transport, or or if you drop it off, they don't have to transport it to you, but they have to transport it to a, the end user. Mm-hmm. First, they have to check that the expiration date is before the time that they can actually get it to the family that needs it. Mm-hmm. Then they have to process, you know, categorize beans in this pile, <laughs> you know. Right. So that requires workers, volunteers to sort it all. Mm-hmm. And so it's just, it's it's easier on everybody if you just donate money. Donate money to yeah. the food banks. Yeah, and don't use it as an opportunity to get rid of your old cans that are expired. They're not going to take them. If you do that, just you're the that worst. Yeah, all you're, do is waste, all you're doing is wasting their valuable time and resources. Yeah. Instead, throw it away like a normal person and either give them money or go out and buy something. Ideally, just give them money. I would almost say put it on the counter and eat it in the next week like a normal person. Right. That's why you see I have a... a a, it's yes. not a bottle. It's not a can. It's, it's a carton. It's a carton of soup uh-huh. that expired in May. Eh, it's probably fine. I'm st- it's wild rice and mushroom. How bad can it be? I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> if it is bad, then you'll know pretty quick. You will. Yeah. So guess who's having soup this week? Okay. <laughs> also, speaking of donating, this is the time of the year when the American Red Cross has little promo items. Oh, that's cute. I opened up a vein this week. And uh, look, mm-hmm. aren't these cute? It's, I wasn't expecting them to be elf themed. They're yeah, they're like official movie oh, that's merch. So cute! Elf socks branded with the American Red Cross. Yeah, that's adorable. I love that. I'm never gonna wear them, but <laughs> you know, it's a it's a nice little thingy. Do you want to go first on what you're thankful for? Yeah, you know what, I will. Okay. So I'm thankful for my pets, Aww. my little critters, just because I feel like they're. You know, they're sort of the the beings that I love going home to. They always make me feel special and loved. You know, I love that Rango keeps me active and he's so funny. Everything he does, no matter how awful it is, like he was like gagging and almost puking <laughs> earlier. And I was like, oh, you're so cute, you little idiot. <laughs> I would dare say anything that comes out of his body is adorable to you. I don't <laughs> yeah. get it quite. <laughs> Not quite, but you know. But I see that it's true. Right. I don't understand why. <laughs> right. But like, I love taking him for walks and just seeing his little butt because his butt is so cute and funny. I don't know why it just cracks me up, you know. And then I've got my two little idiot cats that are just so dumb and so sweet. And I love them so much. You've got Leo. Yeah, who just is such a cuddle bug. You know, he's orange and white. He is. He's a big, fat, orange tabby. He's basically Garfield. He's a Chubba Lumpkins. He is. And then you have a little skinny Stilton. (laughs) I do. Coco, who's my favorite. I know. You love her so much. And they both just do so many things that just crack me up and bring me so much joy. Yeah. That's beautiful. Well, and I love that Leo's such a little cuddle bug, too. And I love that Coco's a secret cuddle bug. She is, you yeah. Know? She you got to know how to get to her. Right. She won't. Food. <laughs> mainly. She won't just give it to you, though. She'll, like, wait until it's the most inconvenient for you, and then she'll be like, hi, I'm finally gracing you with my presence. Here yes. you go. She's a bit of a diva. <laughs> She's such a diva, and she? I love it. Yeah. And I love it about her. I do. Yeah. Yeah. They're just great little creatures and they make me really happy and they make me laugh all the time. So we we were hanging out together for a year, uh-huh. a full year before Coco and I shared up. We had a shared moment <laughs> where she looked up at me and was like, oh, you're okay. She's so funny. And you know, now she's gotten into this habit where every time she hears my alarm go off, she'll jump on the bed and like meow meow and ask for kitty, like kitty loves and like pets and stuff. And it's so annoying. You're a captive audience. (laughs) Well, yeah, it's so annoying because either I have to get out of bed immediately and you're slowing me down or I've set that alarm intentionally early so I can wake up slow. Some snooze. Exactly. (laughs) And here you are forcing me to wake up fast. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But yeah, but I'm grateful to her for that too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm grateful for modern plumbing. Oh, that's a good one. And I just, I, uh, it's the thing that separates us from the animals. It is. There was a, uh, I think it was a news article or a meme or something this week or two weeks ago about how, you know how the royal court would travel from palace to palace in Europe? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you'd summer in France and then you'd Mm -hmm. winter in eh, wherever. Yeah. That wasn't the only reason that they uh, switched palaces. A big, in fact, huge reason was all of the defecation started to pile up. 
Jeez. Gross. Super gross. I hope you're not making Thanksgiving dinner listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me, we got to put together a side to take to my family's Thanksgiving this year. Oh, yes. Yes, we yeah. do. Okay, I got but a couple I, ideas. And I really want to pick up some of those turkey butter sculptures because they crack me up so much. Winco had them this week. In fact, because they, I think we've mentioned them two or three times this episode. Uh-huh. Winco, you're IFAF this week. So crisp high five. Whoosh. 21 Finger Gun Salute. Pew, pew. And Chef's Kiss to Winco, an employee-owned company. No pets allowed. I love Winco <laughs> Foods. Okay. Love Winco. Yeah, they Love you rock. guys. They rock. And you know what? That's a great I- IFAF, because I guarantee anyone who's cooking anything for Thanksgiving has gone there <laughs> this <laughs> week. And you know what? Those employees need some props, because I know that this is the worst time of the year to work in a grocery store. And nothing against the other fine grocery stores. Albertsons, no. Brolums, you're fantastic, too. Oh, I do love Brolums, especially their cheese boards. <laughs> but because I have a personal bias, this week, mm-hmm. week of Thanksgiving, shopping week, it's Winco. Yeah. So... Would the castle like air out in between and that's how they could manage to go back? Because it's not like they abandoned it. I assume so. I assume that a cleaning crew came through, maybe just followed the royal court for a couple of weeks after they left. Maybe they'd go set up the next place, come back and clean up that place. Yeah, maybe. But yeah, we, we really did used to live in filth. It wasn't... Up until only a couple hundred years mm-hmm. ago that we discovered the more we separate ourselves from excrement, the better off we are. Right. Well, and you know, I think that was part of why high heels were, were a <laughs> yeah, thing. Because, yeah, the, Cause the streets were- Because it would lift you were, off of the street a little bit more. The streets were dirt and horse poop. Yeah, and people poop. Uh, I you, think so. Well, yeah, they just throw their chamber pots out the window. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was gross. It was gross. Yeah. Gross. That's why they had those um, muck, muckers. By the doors, they're like these little racks that you'd wipe your shoes off on oh, to muck get all racks. the muck. Yeah, to get all the muck off of them. Also, a very cool concept that you'll if you see. And there's two locations in Idaho Falls on Lincoln Road, west of Action Motorsports, and then Civitan Park, um, one block north of the Idaho Falls Temple. You'll see a fence with coats hanging on it. Mm-hmm. So that's the wall of warmth that's been going on for six years, and they have just winter coats. So if you're in need of a winter coat through November 25th. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why they don't extend it, like because I'm sure people need winter jackets in February too. I have to assume that it's something about maintenance. Yeah, it could be. You know, because it would get a lot harder to maintain the coats that are hanging on there after that, because it's going to get a lot colder. There's, a, but also that's kind of when you need them the most. Kind of, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there's there are donation locations at WallOfWarmth.com. Mm-hmm. What a great idea! What a great cause! And then if your family needs a winter coat, you just walk up to the wall and pick one out. Yeah. And stay warm this winter. So I think th- it's a great idea. So have we done enough heartfelt crap? <laughs> <laughs> Can we... So it's we- the holidays. This is when everything's heartfelt. Yeah. It's so sure. cold outside, we have to stay warm in our hearts. So speaking of staying warm and fires and roasting, mm-hmm. we thought we would present the first annual IFAF Thanksgiving roast. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> where we just pick something, anything, and give it a good old roasting. Yeah. Sort of in the style of Comedy Central or Friars Club. You want to go yeah. first? Uh, you know, now, I'll let you take the lead on this one. I have two, and they're both actually pretty light. Okay. So do do can we do a roast sandwich? I'll do okay, one, you yeah. do one, I'll do the... Okay. Who doesn't like a nice roasted sandwich? That's why we have panini <laughs> presses. Yeah. I'm not even sure what this organization is, but take a look. Oh, I know the one. They've got the word Idaho there, but instead of an A, they've got the state of Idaho, the shape of the state of Idaho. Can we stop doing that, please? And here's why. The state of Idaho doesn't look like any letter in the alphabet except maybe an L. Yeah. So if your word has an L in it, by all means, stick the shape of the state of Idaho in it. Otherwise, Idaho... Right. Is what it looks like. Now, again, (laughs) nothing against this organization. I'm sure they're fine, outstanding, and way better than me. I'm sure they are a less Adler quality organization. Right. But don't do that. Stop doing that. I kind of wonder if that idle hoe goes to modern hoe. It might. Yeah. It might match. (laughs) So there's my light roast. That's funny. (laughs) And you know, even if they would have just done the A, but then made the Idaho like the, the core of the A, that little... Thing, sure. You know, that's that's better. Or if they would have made the D and then did like an archway from the tip down to the, you know, greater Idaho Falls area. 
you know? So many other ways that could have been done. So many. So many. Even made that the eye. Right. Okay. Yeah. Although I guess that would make Again, it look like Idaho. <laughs> nothing to take away from your fine organization. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's it's an amazing organization. They do great work, whoever it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if I can necessarily roast it because I'm not as funny when I'm put on the spot, but I'm definitely going to rant about it. Black Friday. Okay. So many people love Black Friday. They wait all year for Black Friday. And I think those people are silly little yeah. gooses. Because here's the thing. You want to know what retailers do? Maybe they'll do like a little sale here and there, but either they're doing those sales or darn near, darn near those sales other times during the year if you just watch for it, or they're bumping up the prices so they can knock them way down later on. Yeah. You know, they don't have to be selling it that low at that time. They're just doing it like that so that you think that you're getting a better deal. And the whole idea of waking up at 4 a.m. to be the first one in the store. Right. The fact that you're like going in and stampeding and trampling workers or children so that you can give a piece <laughs> of tech that's going to be outdated in like a year or two to your iPad baby. No, stop it. <laughs> stop making people work on Thanksgiving. Stop making making people work ungodly hours the day after Thanksgiving. I'm glad a lot of stores have taken the stance like, no, we're not open on Thanksgiving. Right. Go be finally, with your family like a normal person. Finally, after so or long of not doing that. Or cry into your expired carton of soup. Right. <laughs> yeah, honestly. And it's just, it's so stressful for everyone. I hate the crowds. I don't want to be around that many people all at once. And realistically, dude, especially nowadays, they're doing the same sale all month long. You don't have to go on Black Friday. You can go anytime in November and you're going to get the same sale. But because people have hyped it up, now they have to go on Black Friday and they have to make a day out of it. And it sucks for everybody in the service industry. Stop doing that to people. And there are some people that love that stuff. I know. They're called psychopaths. Right. But they, <laughs> well, and that's the but thing. they love it. And the sales are never worth it. Yeah. Like, I would rather pay the extra $50 to go on a day when there aren't that many people there and I don't have to fight for my life. Would you be open to doing it just for the experience? I have done it once. Okay. I would be open to doing it again, but this year I will be working it. I, yeah, I can't remember the last time I went shopping on a Black Friday. Yeah. Black Friday... It really should be Pajama and TV Friday. Right. In yeah. My mind. Absolutely. Black Friday is like Thanksgiving leftovers, mm -hmm. bumming around on the couch, maybe take a shower, maybe not. Yeah. Really, Black Friday should be <laughs> the day that you're putting together some leftover monstrosity sandwich, you know? Yes. Yeah. I saw one where the person put, um, I don't remember, oh, they put the stuffing in a waffle iron. And made like oh, that into man. the, that was the bread of their sandwich. Oh man. Mind blown. Yeah, that sounds So cool. smart. Yeah. But that's what that day should be used for. Not for buying a bunch of crap. Yeah. And also it's the day after you're thankful for everything. What happened to that? I thought you were thankful. Yeah. You, 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 you have a day where you practice a whole day where mm -hmm. you practice gratitude. And then it's like consumerism. Right. In my veins. Oh, I hate, I hate, <laughs> and Part of it is because I've worked more Black Fridays than I've gone to, but also... I was going to say, you're extremely qualified to talk about this <laughs> as a former retail worker. Soon to be formal, thankful. <laughs> Soon to be former. I'm always formal. Come on. <laughs> you, yeah, because yeah. you, you're actually changing jobs. Yeah. So here's the funny thing. I'm starting my new job this week, but I have actively decided to go back and help out on Black Friday because I'm not a total dick. You are... Falling on that sword. You're jumping on that grenade. Honestly, I, I'm actually being canonized next week at the <laughs> Vatican. So if you'd Saint like to Carl. come, yes. <laughs> Just, you know, shoot me a message. I'll get you an invite. You can take a picture of the Pope. <laughs> so we, we've roasted using the shape of the state of Idaho uh, as any other letter than L. Right. We've roasted Black Friday. And then I've got one more. Here's an ad for the Grand Teton Mall Santa. Mm -hmm. There's Santa. But he ain't at the Grand Teton Mall. He's because he's first of all he's on an escalator. Second of all, behind him is a bunch of glass. Right. So, hey, Grand Teton Mall, don't you think that the people who are most likely to go to your mall have been before and know what it looks like on the inside? So I know it's an ad for Santa at the Grand Teton Mall, but what I'm really seeing an ad for is Santa in a big city somewhere. Right. That's kind of like McDonald's having an ad showing a juicy Big Mac in a bougie New York or Tokyo Burger King. Mm-hmm. 
Now, that being said, I actually know a lot of the people who put together the ads for the Grand Teton Mall, and they're lovely, lovely people. I'm sure they are. That's Um, what a roast is. We're being snarky because we can, and and forget your feelings. And very gently, maybe I'll say, this year, when you have Santa in the mall, take a picture to use for next year. You know the professional photographer that's taking pictures of Santa with the kids? Maybe have him snap one with, you know, Sans kids, right at the beginning, for example, when Santa's fresh. Yeah. And use that next year. (laughs) It could be useful. You know, I think that too many people don't have what I would call a call my baby ugly session. Right. I think too many people, I think too many marketing decisions are made on a whim Mm -hmm. or by people who aren't very good at it or by people who don't take it into the conference room and say, okay, guys, shoot holes in this. Right. We've all been told we're special now. And that's how, you know, you end up with a 21-year-old named Brinkstley picking his nose in a meeting Uh, because his mom has told him that everything he does is gold. Right. It's so true. (laughs) You know? A little criticism and a little shame is sort of necessary, again, to separate us from the animals. Napoleon Dynamite, the 20th anniversary screening at the Colonial Theater Saturday night was a blast. Loved it. Here we went as, so I went as Rex Quando. Uh huh. And I, of course, had to do Napoleon. Yeah. Because it, it's the ginger code. Yeah. Yeah. Is he ginger or blonde? It, I think in real he's life strawberry he's strawberry blonde. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. At least in the, in the show. Heater. Every time I see a Napoleon Dynamite wig, it's more on the red side. The cast was great. If you missed it, in fact, if you missed it and want to fly somewhere, I think they're doing it in a few other towns. Really? Where the movie like is really hot. Yeah. Huh. But, but I mean, to be like, this is the town that it makes the most sense. Absolutely. Like this is where it absolutely should be. We're the biggest place closest to Preston. Right. Except maybe Salt Lake. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, sure. But, but we're better. <laughs> but yeah, what, what a great time. It was so fun. The audience had a blast. Uh-huh. You know, they, they almost knew every line. And, mm-hmm. you know, I even had to practice my uh, nobody wants a roundhouse kick to the face when I'm wearing these bad boys line. <laughs> <laughs> a couple people made me say it. Uh-huh. So much fun. So fun. It was, it was just a little cosplay. <laughs> well, and you know, when I was a kid, we loved that show. To the point where there was a guy in my class who knew the entire dance from Napoleon Dynamite. Wow, that's commitment. And that was, yeah, and that and was like his talent he, show thing that he did. It was awesome. That's back when he had to back up the DVD player. Right, right, exactly. But that yeah. was his talent show? Yeah, he actually oh. did the dance from Napoleon Dynamite as his talent. I wonder if video of that <laughs> exists, because that would be cool. I bet it does somewhere. I could reach <laughs> out and see if he wants to share it. I'm sure if we YouTube it, there's a few yeah. people who have done the whole thing. Well, and I know like he's verbatim. a and he's a local musician around here, so maybe he'd want the props. I don't know. I oh, could cool. ask. Okay. I'll reach out. Yeah, let's we'll have that for a follow up in a future episode. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> One thing that I don't think we have time for this week, so I'll touch on it and tell you all about it next week. I'm a member of a group called the Snake River Radio Players. And that's why I had to go to Goodwill this week is to get that 194. I'm supposed to look like a voiceover actor from the 40s because we're all going to be talking in microphones. And I love getting to go see you in plays and stuff. I, yeah, I, I don't know why I do it. I You're really a don't. You're a performer. That's why. It, it must be in my blood or something. But it's, it's, it's kind of funny because it's sort of, I'm really good at one note characters. <laughs> you know? Okay. So uh, last year I played a 1940s gangster by the name of Sky Masterson. That's true. Huh? This year I'm playing a 1940s sort of salty PI <laughs> by the name of Eb Scrooge. I mean, that's true. You're kind of, yeah, you're kind of yeah. getting, um, what's that word? Typecast. Typecast. Thank you. Jeez. And that's, I mean, but that's, I can do one thing fairly well. <laughs> well, and I, I think you can do other things well. I, but every, everybody else in the cast is like infinitely more talented than I am. They're just fantastic people. Right. And I feel barely qualified to be there. But it's it's going to be fun. It's December 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th at Trinity United Methodist Church. That's the one right next to Museum Vidaho. The one that, if you haven't been inside, has a really cool pipe organ. I love that one. And ever since I was a kid, I always wanted that to, like, I don't know, somehow go for sale so I could make it my house. Because <laughs> it looks so cool. I actually have always wanted to live in a church. Yeah? Yeah. Like, I just, I love how old churches look. I feel like it'd be such a rad place to have parties. Yes, it would. Yes, it would. Yeah. Bang something out on the pipe organ. Yeah, I think Uh it'd be dope. But anyway, (laughs) I'd love to live in a church. There's a fun little tidbit about me. Trinity United has a really cool Christmas mass, too. They have the candles and Mm. everything. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. Have you ever been to like a Christmas mass, like a midnight Um, mass? 
Kind of. Okay. I went to one in Mexico, so I didn't understand anything that was being said. I caught a little bit, uh, but I did that once, and I'm that gonna was hazard a guess and say it was a Catholic one. <laughs> it was, it was, yeah. I went with my uh, my Mexican's family. Uh huh. Yeah, it was really cool. Did you have to do a lot of stand up, sit down, fight, we, fight, fight? We did. Yeah. And, like everybody else seems to know exactly when to stand and sit, except yes. for like you know they can definitely tell the non Catholics because they're a beat behind. Right. Well, and also <laughs> you know here I am the only white girl yeah, in right. the entire church. Probably also a dead giveaway. <laughs> Clearly, it did not understand everything that was being said yeah. but like you know i'd sort of get poked when it was time and i was like okay thanks because yeah. otherwise i would have had no idea <laughs> whenever you hear hey so cristo you uh <laughs> you jump up and say hallelujah right no. <laughs> right <laughs> something like that yeah but it was pretty cool you know i would be down to do it again if it doesn't interfere with any of my other plans <laughs> sure yeah. yeah midnight's a little late even a little for bit. a party animal like me man yeah man <laughs> yeah i you know that's pumpkin time the thing wait pumpkin yeah, yeah, that's oh, when. Oh, gotcha, because that's when the character that's when my character into turns into a pumpkin, and I got to yeah. get my ass back home. <laughs> right, that's fair. <laughs> I got to get fair. my pumpkin ass back in bed. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of fifty fifty on going, but I'd I'd give it a go. Why not? Yeah, maybe take a take a caffeine pill at like take a new nice new tropic stack with some L theanine on it. Uh, there you go at like at 10, like nine p.m. Yeah, 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 because it lasts for like five hours. The midnight, oh, the, I thought sorry, the midnight no, mass. The new sorry. tropic stack I'm speaking of. To be fair, back when I went to church, it lasted three hours. So that's not totally out there. It's a lot. Yeah. I would also say Jesus is worth it, but it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. 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 Having to give up one of your entire days off to go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's our show. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We're One thing I didn't mention is we're thankful for you. Thanks for supporting. You know, the only way that we can keep this up, really, is if people keep being interested. The second that there's no one to play to, well, I mean, we'll still talk to each other. Sure, yeah, but, but, <laughs> but maybe not on camera. But yeah. every single like and follow and subscription mm -hmm. and download... Uh, of our audio podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. And we are everywhere. We're Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, X, and TikTok. Yeah. But every little thing you do, Bobby Brown, <laughs> not Bobby Millie Brown. Is that her name? <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> every little thing you do is magic. And um, we just, we are thankful for you this Thanksgiving. <laughs>